Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers and find out which one is greater. We have log of 11 with base 10 and log of 12 with base 11. And we're going to figure out which number is larger. So first of all, let's take a look at the function f of x equals log x plus 1 with base x. Right, great. Obviously, when you replace x with 10, you're going to get the first number. And when you replace x with 11 in this function, you're going to get the second number. So this will allow us to compare these numbers by approaching, from a, by approaching this problem from a functional sense. So first of all, um, I want to find out if this function is increasing or decreasing or it's, if there is any maxima or minima. But I want to put it in a nicer form because the base is a variable. It's log, not the natural log like ln. So let's go ahead and use change of base formula to write this as ln x plus 1 divided by ln x. And let's just call this f of x. I'm going to be using two functions here. So the, this one I'm going to use f of x. The other one I'm going to use g of x. Now notice that we have some restrictions here. For example, the base cannot be 0. It needs to be greater than 0 actually and cannot be 1. And x plus 1 also needs to be greater than 0. But that just that's covered already by x uh, greater than 0. Because if uh, x is greater than 0, then x plus 1 is also greater than 0. Great. So x should not uh, equal 1. x should always be positive. Awesome. Under those conditions, we can go ahead and differentiate f. And to differentiate, we're going to use the quotient rule. Remember, the quotient rule is the derivative of the top my, times the, the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom function times the top. And all of that is divided by the bottom function squared. So it's going to look like this. 1 over x plus 1, the derivative of ln x plus 1, times ln x minus the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, times the top function, which is ln x plus 1. And all of that is going to be divided by ln x quantity squared. Awesome. Let's make a common denominator and write f prime in the simplest form. So if you um, multiply you know, ln x by x and ln x plus 1 by x plus 1, you're going to get a common denominator. And x plus 1 times x is going to be in the denominator. So it's going to look like this. x ln x minus x plus 1 times ln x plus 1. And all of that is divided by x times x plus 1 times ln x quantity squared. So this is the derivative of f. And we're going to find out the critical points for f. So we're going to set the derivative equal to 0. It's pretty much what we do for finding maxima, minima, you know, you know, we're on in intervals on which f of x is increasing or decreasing and so on and so forth. So this implies that obviously x is going to be positive and different from 1. So the denominator uh, should never be 0, right, in this case. So we're good. Uh, numerator, if you set the numerator equal to 0, then you get the following. Now for which x value you're going to get this equation, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at another function now. And I'm going to call that g. So let g of x be x ln x. And then uh, we're going to differentiate g. We probably looked at this function before, but let's just quickly differentiate it. Uh, we use the product rule, 1 times ln x plus 1 over x times x. These are going to cancel out. And g prime is going to be ln x plus 1. Now, it's not the ln of x plus 1. It's just 1 plus ln x, in other words. So if, uh, in this case, uh, you can set it equal to 0, you're going to find the critical point as 1 over e. So to keep a long story short, if x is greater than 1 over e, then g prime is going to be positive, which means g is increasing. You can easily verify this. This is easy to do. Uh, so basically, uh, for, for these x values, g is always increasing. But notice that our smallest x value is x equals 10, or our x values are x equals 10 and 11. They're definitely greater than 1 over e. So our function is always going to be increasing on the interval we're looking for. So notice that uh, this implies g is an increasing function on that interval. 
And since x plus 1 is greater than x, this implies that g of x plus 1 is greater than g of x because g is increasing on that interval. And this basically means that x plus 1 times ln x plus 1 by our definition of g, right, is going to be greater than x ln x. Therefore, these two values will never be equal to each other, right, at least on an interval. Can they be equal at a certain point? Something to think about. But uh, unfortunately for our case, they can never be equal, which means that uh, there is no maxima or minima or minima on our interval for g. Okay, great. So now let's go back to f and remember f of x was defined as f of x was defined as log x plus 1 with base x or we wrote it as ln x plus 1 over ln x, remember? And that's where we got the g from by differentiating this. So since there is no maxima or minima, now if you Take a look at the derivative of f, which is f prime, one more time. Remember, f prime was x ln x minus x plus 1 times ln x plus 1, right? Divided by x, x plus 1 times ln x quantity squared. Since uh, these, the top uh, two values can never be equal, and we know that x ln x is always less than x plus 1 times ln x plus 1, therefore you have a negative numerator. And the denominator for positive x values were actually, uh, I should say, uh, for x values that are greater than 1, well, never mind, because uh, it's always going to be positive because of the square. So this f prime is always going to be negative. So f of x, and we don't have to really specify an interval on its domain, it is going to be, uh, the derivative is going to be negative. Therefore, f, uh, f of x is always decreasing. All right. Great. So since f of x is always decreasing, uh, we know that um, it, me it basically means that you have a decreasing function, so we're evaluating it at 10, and we're evaluating it at 11. So the value at 11 is definitely going to be smaller than the value. So since we're looking for the larger one, we can safely say that f of 10 is going to be greater than f of 11. But if you go back to the definition of f, this implies that log... 11 bit base 10 is always going to be greater than log 12 with base 11. So the larger number is just going to be the first one. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other things that I'm just going to finish up with that. So if you kind of take a limit of this function as x approaches infinity, you're going to notice something interesting. So log, what happens if x approaches infinity, right? Obviously x and x plus 1 are going to be super duper close. So you're going to get something like log x with base x which is 1. But you can also look at it this way, right? Obviously, that's that should include the limit, right? That should be the limit as x approaches infinity, not 0. ln x plus 1 over ln x. And this limit is just going to be 1. And so, in other words, and we, know, we also know that log 11 with base 10 is greater than 1 because 11 is greater than 10, right? Log 10, 10 is going to be 1. So, in other words, the logarithmic values are getting smaller and smaller and they're approaching 1. Therefore, this also shows us, well, it, it's not a proof, but it kind of shows you that this is greater than that because the values are always going to get, um, they're always going to get smaller and smaller. All right, great. So now, Let's go ahead and take a look at the numerical values and we'll finish up with that. So log 11 is going to be approximately 1.041 and log 12 in base 11 is going to be 1.036. They're pretty close, but obviously the first one is larger. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. and. Bye-bye.